thank you guys for joining us today. We have everyone signed in, so we're gonna just run with this. My name is Malaya, and I am a textile print specialist here at IP Supplies. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today to discuss the best practices for your workflow and review commonly asked questions regarding Caldera and the HP Latex portfolio. Today, we're gonna learn how Caldera's easy media solution helps sync profiles from the printer, discover the power of Caldera's automation workflow. Today, we are joined by Joey Phillips from Caldera, Timothy Mitchell from HP, and Natasha Freyer from Caldera as well. Before we get started, I would like to mention that all attendees will be muted throughout the webinar to reduce background noise. During the webinar, we encourage you to feel free to type whatever questions you may have in the presenter's chat box and during the presentation, um, as well as after, we'll answer some of those questions and check in with you guys. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Timothy Mitchell. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you today uh, for joining us today. Uh, very appreciated. I know you're all webinared out. We've all been on Zoom for a, what seems like a very long time. Or we're not on Zoom. We're on what? Go to webinar. Go to webinar. Yep. <laughs> I lose track. So let me explain uh, who I am, what we're doing here. My name is Timothy Mitchell. I am a lap applications, a late HP latex application specialist. Uh, I concentrate on the low, what we call low volume latex printers, which are your smaller latex roll to roll devices, 315, 335, 365, and 500 series. Now the printers themselves do not print through any kind of driver like traditional drivers through Adobe or something. You have to use a RIP software. That's the only way you can send files to them. And for those of you who are not familiar with a RIP software, haven't used it, trust me, you, once you use it, you'll never go back. There's no way you could ever print without one. We have a great honor today of having one of the best RIP software companies in the world with us. Um, Caldera is outstanding. They have been absolutely the top cutting edge RIP software for many, many years now. They are used widely in the most important and the largest and the more, most color fastidious shops in the world. It is an outstanding software. HP and Caldera have partnered for, well, since I've started HP 10 years ago, so it's been steady Caldera from day one. Uh, we use it widely in all of our demo centers. I'm in a bit of an unusual situation here because I'm not in the demo center. I'm actually in my garage. We call it a studio because, well, it sounds better, you know? So if you was a solvent printer, we call it a garage, but this is a latex printer, so we call it a studio. And from this studio, normally I have tremendous, in the demo center down the road, I have tremendous resources, but in the garage, I'm a little more limited. What I have here is a latex 360 it effectively is identical to the 365, so they're interchangeable. And I also have a Suma cutter behind me here. I have a heavy bag because I got tired of taking it down and putting it up all the time. So if you, uh, if you put a sticker on it, then it becomes marketing collateral. So now it's meant to be there. We have our founders behind us, uh, Dave and Bill, uh, the original Silicon Valley garage startup company uh, in Palo Alto. The garage is a national historic register. And what I'm doing behind me is I'm printing an actual ICC chart that can be built on the printer itself. Now, the way that the interaction between the RIP and the printer works is I essentially create a media on the printer. That is, I, I either download it from the HP Media Locator, which I do all the time. It's a software online, type in HP Media Locator, and you'll see it. Um, hallucinatory echo. If somebody could be so kind as to mute. Don't, don't get me wrong, I like hallucinatory echoes. I just have to kind of know they're coming. So what I have behind me is a latex printer and it has the capability of doing its own color work. Okay, you can download from the media locator and hit color calibrate and it will print a chart that looks like this. This is what we call a closed loop color calibration chart. So you will download from the media locator or create a media from, from scratch, which is what I did here behind me. This is a new product that HP released and it is called the HP Removable Adhesive Fabric. 
So it's very similar to say photo text in terms of composition. It's not on the locator yet. So I loaded it on the printer. I gave it a name. And then in addition to a name, I gave it um, a speed. I usually start out at 12 pass as my high quality speed to define first. So 12 pass, 1200 DPI, 12 picoliter drop, and then I chose, I printed a chart. And that chart is essentially a chart that helps me identify how much ink I can put down. Uh, it's not on this chart, it's on another one. It, it's essentially a simple visual chart and it shows me how much ink I can put down at 12 pass, 120% density. And if everything is dry and there's no bleeding, then you can put the maximum amount down. The amount of ink you put down is effectively determines your color gamut. And on a latex printer, we have different percentage of density. That density determines the higher the number, the more ink you're going to use, but then the larger your color gamut. That defines your color right there from a smaller gamut to a larger gamut. With 80% density, for example, you're going to have a smaller gamut. It will still look good, but it's not going to be as rich to hit Pantone colors and stuff. So I start at 120. Once that's selected, the next chart I print is this one, which determines the ink restrictions and the linear curve on the printer using the printer's onboard I1. It has an I1 built right into it. This is right now doing a scan of all of the swatches for the ICC profile chart that it's building on the printer. So the latex allows you to define a media, define how much ink, put in your mechanical settings, which is temperature, your speed, how much ink, your vacuum. Then you link it to the color, closed loop color calibration chart. That establishes a reference point. It's very important for these reference points. And then I use the onboard spectrophotometer to read it. Then the last step is I build an ICC profile. Now you can do all this on the printer, and in which case Caldera will take that information, sync to the printer automatically through Easy Media, and then get the information it needs and be able to print, you're good to go. Or you can also use Caldera and its very robust color engine. And if you choose not to use the onboard on the printer and you want to use, like I have here, a couple spectrophotometers, I have an I1 with an I1IO table, and then I also have an, an, uh, what's called an I1ISIS XL, and that's a sheet, uh, a sheet reader. So I have some very nice spectrophotometers, and if I wanted to go and use Caldera's color engine, they have really fantastic colors. So for most of my day-to-day -day uses, I just use the onboard. But when I want to really dial it in, like I'm competing with like an uh, what used to be called SGIA, now it's Print United Shootout or um, uh, ISA Shootout, one of these competitions where we're showing the best the printer can do. At that point, I'll usually do everything in Caldera because they have very sophisticated color and there's more controls over every step of the way. And I'll let Caldera explain those steps. But I just want to introduce the printer by explaining the ability to print with a spectrophotometer, print directly, and then do most of your color calibrations right on the printer, and then just have Caldera automatically sync to it, get the color information from the printer, place it in Caldera's software, and then at that point, you can print anything you want to from it because Caldera now has it in there. There is always a bi-directional relationship between Caldera in between the printer. Caldera and the printer always talk to each other. And any time you can update and say, what's going on, what's going on, and Caldera will get information. So if I make changes, for example, on the fly, on the printer, if I select, and Caldera will notice, hey, you made changes from the last time you ran this. Do you wanna save these permanently or do you wanna keep them? Usually I save them, but there's a lot of ways that you can uh, override them just using them one time or you can update them. Now, Caldera has introduced a brand new version, 13. Okay, it's completely new. It's got a, a ton of new features and I'm gonna let Joey discuss all of those. So at the moment, I just wanted to introduce the Latex. I wanted to introduce the partnership and the relationship with Caldera. Um, if you go into the demo center right now, 
uh, currently we're kind of closed. There's very re great restrictions on it, but there is a team running and I guarantee you they're running Caldera right now on that big flatbed, the latex flatbed. They're also probably using it on the dye sub or some of the industrial latex printers. So there is a long relationship with Caldera. It's an outstanding, uh, very sophisticated uh, piece of software with some tremendous color capabilities. In fact, far beyond anything I'm capable of using. So I wanna introduce, if I may, we're gonna switch over to Joey and then he'll go through the software and I'll revisit you a little bit later towards the end. Joey, you ready to go? Oh yeah, I just need to share my screen. Perfect, all yours, bud. Can you guys make me a presenter, please? Should be all set, Joey. You got it. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Perfect. Hi, everybody. My name is Joey Phillips. I also have Natasha with me on the line. Um, I do pre-sales, and I'm the technical engineer here at Caldera North America. And T Tasha is the North American uh, channel manager. So today, I want to talk to you about color management with the RIP. I'm going to go through some different features we have as well. And then at the end, I'm going to see if anybody has any questions or concerns that they've came across in the field. So like, like Timothy was saying, we have Easy Media, which is going to be the step-by-step -step wizard that allows you to build a, a color management profile. So opposed to using the onboard um, Spectro, you can use a third-party one or a different one that's not actually built in on the device. Whenever you use Easy Media, it is a wizard-based module, so it's very easy to go through and build a profile with both great color and great ink savings. And you can also, if you're a color man management expert or if you've done training and know a little bit more about color, it's very easy to dive in and really tweak your profile to get the output just as you expect. So it's very easy to use. Also, we have the Easy Media synchronization, which Timothy touched on. So using Caldera RIP with HP Latex, you can sync the RIP with your printer. So all those profiles that you build on the printer, you can import those on the fly. It's very easy to do with that two-way communication channel. So whenever we do the, the managing of the profiles for your, your LaTeX, if you do an auto sync, it's automatically gonna add all the profiles that are stored on your printer. You wanna be careful with this because if you do missing profiles only, it's just gonna load the ones that Caldera doesn't have currently in the RIP. But if you do a full reset and you have custom profiles in your RIP, and you haven't archived those and backed them up, it's going to override them and they'll be lost. So you really want to be cautious whenever you're doing that, that you select the right option. Um, you also have access to the HP Media Finder, and then you can also install a media patch that maybe you've archived to back up to always make sure you have a revert point. And then we also have a profile library online, um, which you can get to from visiting workspace.caldera.com, or if you're in a version, um, past version 12 or later, um, we have Caldera Doc, which allows you to access all your different profiles uh, from there as well that have been published by HP, which I'm going to show you more of that um, later on. We also have a feature called Ink Performer. Ink Performer calculates the optimum ink mixing using as much black and as little color as possible, so less CMY, more K. It's using uh, Allen's Dynamic Maximum Black technology. So with this, we're going to get our ink savings to really be bumped up especially on darker projects. It's a very easy to use interface. We have two different engines. Um, if you're on a, a older version of the RIP, maybe version 11, you would only have access to that version two. Um, but in the later versions of Caldera, we've introduced the version three of Ink Performer. Whenever you're using Ink Performer, you can choose between multiple black start values. So depending on when those black drops are gonna be introduced. And then you can also choose between different ink level savings. So it's really easy to interact with. I have a couple of slides to show you how to use it. Um, just keep in mind, you do need one license per printer driver, and it needs to be a at least more than six color. So it's not gonna work on any four color drivers or any four color modes that you're using on your printer. Um, it also um, allows the ability to calculate the ink cost. So we can actually rip project twice, and we can say project, whenever it was optimized, save us 30% of ink. So it's really nice whenever it gets into that. And then uh, Ink Performer is also compatible if you're using a custom ink set on one of your drivers. Um, one thing that we have introduced um, because of the COVID-19 situation is we've added three 
Inc. performers to all of our Caldera Care customers' licenses. That will be valid until April of next year. So this is to help recoup costs um, with everything going on. So saving the money on Inc. can really help you out over the next you know, nine months or so until the end of April. And if you're not a current Caldera Care customer, if you subscribe and you get it, um, it will still be valid from the, your start date till the end of April. So it really helps customers get the most out of their printing as they can. And what's great about it, we show a lot of text at a lot of different prints as well as customers. And because of how it's introducing black instead of CMYK, it really helps with uh, gray balance. So you really get neutral grays. And a lot of the text really, and customers as well, think that the color usually comes out better by utilizing Ink Performer. So it's a really powerful tool. To utilize Ink Performer, all you do is go into the color tab on your driver. And then once you open the color module, you're gonna go to the output. From there, as long as you're in a, a driver mode that supports more than four color, um, you can enable Ink Performer. If you're unable to enable Ink Performer, you either don't have it on your license or you're in a driver or a mode that doesn't support it. Um, with that, again, you can choose your engine version, your black start value, and then you can also choose your savings level. So some customers will set everything to maximum and run it all the time. Some customers kind of poke around and maybe set it to high or medium and run it all the time. But you can really dial it in to see what works best for the type of projects you complete. Like if you're doing billboards or yard signs, there's no reason not to do maximum. Um, this can also help with dry time and things like that because you're cutting back on the amount of ink you're using. So here's an example of Ink Performer. So here I have a more of a darker tone image on the left and then just a CMYK file on the right. So using the GCR separation method, I'm using about 12 millimeter, milliliters of ink. And then whenever I use the version three of Ink Performer, I'm cut that down to 9.14 and that's using the high. And then with the maximum, I got that down to 8.37 milliliters. So I'm saving anywhere from 23 to 30% ink on this one project. So it's very substantial and it's very easy to uh, integrate. You don't have to build any new profiles. It sits on top of all your current ICC information. So it's literally plug and play. Just click a couple buttons and you're saving ink. So I'd like to talk to you about some common um, things that from my support tickets that I went through that some customers come across that they're not really sure um, about. Um, one is gonna be the parameter text colors inside the, color, inside the driver. Some customers will see that they're red, blue, or purple. Um, those indicate a mismatch of some sort. If you see white or black, depending on the skin color, that means it's a valid profile, so you're really good to go. If you see red, that means there's no pro color profile information at all. If you see that the text is displayed in blue, that means you have a linearization and ink limit, but no ICC. So basically that profile wasn't finished off. And then if you see a purple, it means it's valid for other modes. So maybe it's a contone printer um, with just a different output. So you should be able to output with purple, um, but you really would want to keep an eye on the throughput. Also with the driver, like Timothy was mentioning, we have the ability to do an easy select. Um, this is a capability of Caldera Rift, um, especially in the later versions. Basically, you have the ability to do auto loading, which is going to ask the printer what size media you loaded. This is really handy because sometimes the media might be 54.03. Um, you can really utilize edge to edge if you need to, especially maybe you're doing a borderless project. Um, you can also do auto media. This is going to ask the printer what's loaded. So whenever you select that profile from the latex controller, um, you can actually, you don't have to do it twice. You don't have to be redundant. You can just ask the printer what's been loaded. So it really helps streamline the whole process instead of going through your laundry list of profiles or your media sizes. It's just a click of a button in both ways. We also have the ability to use horizontal and vertical compensation. So that, um, we recommend not to modify this. Any deviation um, is on the uh, mechanical side of the printer, unless maybe you're doing die stuff and you're getting shrink. Um, so basically, if you're seeing your projects come off your latex and they're too narrow, um, there might be something going on on the hardware itself. But something that a lot of latex customers do utilize is going to be the vertical compensation. So this is uh, very useful if you detect an increase or decrease in the length uh, due to heating or media tension. So sometimes if you're heating too much, you know, just a hair or two and you're doing a 200 inch job, that can really add up. So we have the ability to utilize Caldera and put in an expected link of our project and then measure the project as well 
And then every time we rip something with that driver in the back end with that profile, it's actually going to scale it to that value. So we can still rep everything at 100% scale, but it's going to add the, in this case, the 2.5% on the back end. So it's very easy to utilize. Um, you can attach this per profile. Um, usually different profiles are going to have temp different temperature and tension settings. So that way you don't have to worry about profile A being different from profile B, and then you're applying the same compensation. So very easy to integrate there. With Caldera, we also have lots of great automation features. So basically any repetitive task can be really automated using Caldera RIP. So you can configure printer options and save them. You can encompass all the parameters, the page setup, the settings, the spot color management that goes into it, and then the color management as well. By default, it's always gonna be turned off. Um, and then whenever we configure these, we can actually get in and say, this is my baseline. Maybe you have a cutter. Uh, maybe you always want everything at 100% scale. You can actually set up a baseline inside Caldera where no matter what, as soon as somebody in the shop dumps a file into the driver, it's automatically going to go to those default settings. So you never have to worry about someone forgetting to turn on a cutter mark or something like that. It really helps simplify the process. And then also, um, you can use these quick prints to apply them to jobs in an image bar or a hot folder. So it's really easy to go back and forth between the two, and then you can automate the process. So you do it a couple times, you see that it works, you start submitting images from the image bar like you see, and then the next thing you do, you can really start using hot folders and open up the pipe. That way everything becomes hands-off. Um, whenever you do that, you're better with repeatability, and also uh, you're gonna see less errors because someone forgot to select a, a certain variable. So I'm going to show you some stuff over in the RIP real quick. In two seconds. So the first thing I want to show you is Easy Media. This is our module. So for profiling, it is all wizard based, and you have a two-way communication channel. So I just want to click through a quick profile just so you guys can kind of see um, how easy it is. So basically, all you do is define your media, your mode, and then you get into the wizard. So you can see we have all the steps clearly defined. So as an end user, it's really going to walk you through each step. I want to create a linearization a curve. Um, what device am I using? All the spectros are automatically added into the RIP. If you have an i1 Pro 3, that is something that we support in the latest version of Caldera, which is a great tool introduced by XWrite. But with all these uh, different modules, they're, they're very easy to introduce and use. So you can see their wizard base. You can go from there and really go through each process of the profiling to, again, save ink and really get nice color. Also with the, the automation, once you make a quick set inside your driver, we, we can use our latex. I don't have any profiles. I don't have a, a nice studio like Timothy. Um, but here I can save a quick set with whatever variables I have. This all looks good. Maybe I have a cutter turned off or turned on. Um, whatever I want to do, we can close that. I can use a nesting functionality. So we'll delete this out of here. So we'll save this. We'll call this HP nest. And I can actually grab all these jobs and send it directly to that printer with a click of a button. So you can see all those files are gonna start coming in. And since I'm using that Caldera nest feature, it's actually gonna spool everything together. And since I don't have a driver or a profile, it just kicked me out because it knows it can't process it. Does anyone have any questions? I don't have any questions in the question box as of yet, Joey. Okay. So, Last week here at Caldera, we introduced a new prepress automation tool. I'd like to show you a quick video um, on that product. It's a very nice tool, especially if your guys are using a different RIP other than Caldera, but you really want some of the great uh, prepress automation tools that we have inside the RIP. So I just want to show a little bit about Prime Center. It's a really powerful tool. Again, it sits in your prepress department, and then we can go from there. Oh. 
Prime Center is the new pre-press solution for supplying large format print and cut production. This new Caldera software emphasizes optimized nesting and advanced tools for pre-press automation. Multi-platform software. You can use Prime Center on any workstation at the pre-press level. Prime Center embeds the most used standard Callus pre-flight engine to ensure you deal with compliant PDF files. Choose your features and build your own recipes to automate the nesting. Prime Center is also able to manage metadata attached to the incoming PDF in order to set up an even more automated workflow and smarter nesting. Export PDF layout file and cut file to production stage. Orders or jobs are first submitted to the free press station manually or from a web shop or an ERP, for instance. Prime Center will generate the nested layout based on recipes created by the operator. After adding marks and optimizing the nesting, both the print PDF file and the cut file are sent to the production stage. Here, Caldera RIP software can be automated using preset or workflow to rip the file to the printer. After printing, the cutting can start. Awesome. So that's Prime Center. Um, I don't, haven't seen any questions pop up either. Um, if anybody has any, feel free to ask me, or you can reach out to IT Supplies directly. They are a dealer for Prime Center, um, and they can help out with any questions or any demo licenses you'd like to get. Um, one last thing before I pass it over to Timothy, I would really like to go through the latest and greatest features, um, as you mentioned, in 13.1, which is our latest build release. Um, that way, you guys, if you're on an older build, you kind of really know what the big benefits are of going to the latest and greatest. So the first thing I want to show you guys is Caldera Doc. So this was introduced in version 12, but it's been constantly improved upon in each version since then. So Caldera Doc, let me go ahead and launch this real quick. So this is going to be our landing page for all, a lot of different functionality. Uh, we have Caldera Rip, so we can launch it directly. We have Caldera Jobs, which I'm definitely going to show you. Um, we can create backups for the Rip as well, so we have a revert point. Maybe we're going to upgrade to the next version. Um, so we always can go back and know that we're in a stable environment. Um, and then we can also go through and do some maintenance. So those of you on an older version, you know that you have to go through and clean those temporary files out and manually remove those images from your image bar. And we've now automated these. So you can just, with the click of a button, say that I want to keep stuff older than however many days, and then it's going to handle that accordingly. So that really helps your RIP to run fast and efficient. Because the last thing you want to do is restart your computer and watch your RIP run. And as it's opening, it takes five minutes because you have so many old legacy files in there that no one really needs. Um, and then you can also save configurations for your drivers and your settings. So it's really a landing page for all types of different resources. Uh, before I go away from this page, I want to show you Caldera Jobs. Um, this has been revamped in the 13.1. It's a very powerful tool. So here I can actually dive into my different projects, just like I do in my Caldera Spooler today. I can go in and see the different print information. And what's really nice is I can now see what's inside my AutoNest project. So here's an AutoNest, and I can actually see each piece that went inside that project. That way, if I need to you know, account for it or whatnot, I have the ability to do so. What's also nice is I can archive these jobs, and it will pull them out of my spooler to keep my spooler and the rip nice and clean. And if I ever need to, I can re-import the same job. That way, I can repeat that project again. So there's no more, oh, I keep a million jobs in my spooler because I'm worried about having to repeat the job exactly how it was before. Um, with the ability to archive jobs and Caldera jobs, it takes away all that concern and you can really just back up everything in a safe place and then keep your rip running very efficient. So that's Caldera jobs. 
Um, also inside Caldera Doc is where you can do your license management. Um, since version 12, we are software licenses, so there's no longer a need for a hard hardware dongle. Everything is managed in the cloud. So if you add a new latex device, if you add a new printer in general, or any kind of options, uh, maybe you add Caldera Care. It's really just a, a 24 hour process and your key gets updated. So it's very nice whenever it comes to that. You can also download drivers and profiles like we were mentioning earlier. So profiles, it's gonna actually reference just exactly what you have. So it knows that you have what version. So it's not gonna show you all these different versions like it does on Caldera Workspace. It actually just shows you profiles that have been built for 13.1. So it's very simplified. There's also some great resources, so you can have direct access to downloads, so a version release or an update, you can really grab it right from here. We have introduced a light installer, so the full version has lots of different print drivers and profiles embedded into it natively, um, but maybe you don't need all those and you want to save about three gigs on the download time. Um, so you can download the light version and then just download the drivers directly from your Caldera doc. And then we also have a handful of test files. So if you're ever fighting a customer file, if you're ever coming across any issues, um, we have rasters and vectors, CMYK, RGB gray, and then technical targets as well. And then also in here, we have a cut contour library. I really like this. If you have any kind of cutter, um, really helps streamline the prepress side. So you don't have a bunch of random names coming into your rip. You can really just deploy this and then you know that you're gonna be consistent across the board. And then a handful of other, um, some cut contour jobs, and then some cool screen savers if you want to put Caldera on your desktop. And then the last thing inside here is going to be the direct access. So all of our different resources. So anybody trying to better themselves or coming across issues, this is really the best place to start. Um, you have access to support here. If you're a Caldera Care customer, you know that you have either two, four, eight hour response times. Um, if you're not Caldera Care customer, um, you kind of get to the bottom of the barrel. So it's definitely a, a good option to add to your key. And then, you know, registering your license, the workspace, and then also the Caldera desk. So kind of how-to videos. And then our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is awesome. We're constantly adding new videos, how-tos, and overviews. So if you have anybody new to your company that's not familiar with Caldera, I really suggest they watch the YouTube videos. So some other things that we've introduced um, since version 11 is we have a huge image uh, raster pipeline now. So we're gonna see about a 20 to 30% speed increase on raster images being ripped. So if you do a lot of uh, JPEGs and TIFFs and things like that through the rip and you're getting a bottleneck, you know, upgrading to the latest version can really um, speed that whole process up. Also with, um, we're on the Windows virtualization. If anybody's doing that, if you wanted to host your license that's software-based on your Windows server to keep it safe and away from the actual rip station, you can do that now. We've also improved our contour nesting algorithm. So we're definitely gonna get better material savings than the older legacy versions in the latest version 13. And something else that we've introduced is the ability to do double-sided printing. So we have double-sided printing workflow. So I'm gonna do a driver with a profile just so it doesn't look broken. But inside the rip, I can actually do step and repeat. Let's add some copies so you can see it. Nah, no cutter. So I can actually say, go ahead and align my margins in a specific way. And I can also do double-sided printing. So I can automate this workflow. I can say I need an automatic side A and a same action for side B. And it's really going to handle it as expected. So in that case, basically my side A is going to be to the left and then side B is going to be to the right. So I have the functions inside the page layout to do it manually, or I can use the double-sided printing module to just do it automatically. So this is a re really handy, powerful tool um, that we introduced in 13.1. Um, and then we've also added like tile order. If you're doing tile projects, you can control how those tiles are being throughputted. So maybe you wanna go from right to left instead of left to right and things like that. Fully customizable now. And then the last thing um, that I wanna to talk to you guys about is our high dynamic uh, linearization to kind of come full circle. So we improved our algorithm um, to help linearization accuracy by about 10% in difficult conditions. So maybe you're doing floor graphic or something like that. Um, it really can help you streamline the whole process and really get better color and smoother transitions across the board. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back to you, Timothy. I think I have 
uh, con about everything uh, with Caldera. Tasha, do you have anything to add about maybe Caldera Care or anything like that? Um, well, first of all, I just want to thank uh, both Joey and Timothy for taking the time to just kind of uh, go through this and discuss this. I'm not sure how many of the customers on this call are current Caldera customers. If you're not a current Caldera customer and you are using an alternative RIP, I would invite you to uh, give our, our software a try. We are very open and generous with demo licenses. Uh, Dem or Joey uh, works with most all of our demo customers just to make sure they're getting the most out of their demo. We have uh, one other pre-sales engineer that does that as well with Joey. And uh, we would invite you to try Caldera as an alternative RIP for you. Many times, uh, alternative RIPs that you have, you can use those as a trade-in towards Caldera if you happen to be using uh, one of our competitor RIPs. But um, I just wanted to thank you guys uh, as well. And as Joey mentioned, Caldera Care. Caldera Care is basically our maintenance program that we have with Caldera at, for our RIP. And what that gives you is access to our support team with guaranteed response times, as well as um, a couple free webinars a year on preset topics as well as one free upgrade a year. And if you're on Caldera now, you probably know that we have a major upgrade annually, and that can get quite expensive since that's included in Caldera Care. That's an important piece of the financial puzzle. If you were to maintain Caldera Care with your Caldera RIP, you would never have to actually pay for an upgrade again because it would be part of your Caldera Care. So if anybody happens to have any questions, we would be happy to discuss or answer them on the RIP. If not, we can go back to Timothy. Um, so actually, we did get one in here. So we have Ruffin Marshall said that I'm already a Caldera user, but on 12.1, who should I contact to try out version 13? So that's kind of a two-fold question. Um, Ruffin, if you have a rep here at IT Supplies, I would recommend you reaching out to them. Um, they will be able to get in contact and get you going. Uh, so it looks like from what I'm seeing, Kristen is your contact. And Kristen will be able to actually reach out to Caldera and get that ball rolling for you. That way you can try out version 13. Perfect, and that's also and a perfect like, opportunity. That's the perfect opportunity to also rough and get on Caldera Care, because um, if you're on version 12 right now, um, you're gonna need to pay to get to 13. We do have a special promotional upgrade to get you to 13 if you're also buying Caldera Care. So now would be a perfect time to do that. But going forward, if you maintain Caldera Care, you wouldn't have to pay to upgrade because that would be included. But we would love to have you try version 13 and work with your IT sales rep, and they will coordinate with me, and we can go ahead and get that going for you. Absolutely. Okay, should we go back to Timothy? Timothy's making everybody yeah, hungry. So. I'm gonna switch it back over to you, Timothy. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Joey and Tasha, very good, excellent. You also reminded me of a whole bunch of things. Uh, hold on. Do you guys stop sharing screen or do I do anything? You're going to share your screen. Actually, I got you I'm, all I know, I'm good. You're good. I'm good. All right. Yep. Reminding me of a couple things. So I have a couple questions for you, Joey and Tasha. Um, for 13, obviously, I work for HP. We have a ton of PCs. Um, we're not a Mac company, but we use them. Can you use Linux with version 13? Absolutely. We support Debian 10 with version 13.1. Okay, and then if I want to run it on a Mac and I got to go to HP and say, hey, which is always fun, hey, can I get a Mac? And uh, what do what version of the operating system do I need? Um, any of the later, everything new is going to ship with Catalina and we support Catalina with 13.1. Um, but with okay. hardware, it's really nice. So you want to be around 16 to 32 gigs by a RAM is usually the best way to fall. And about a 500 gig hard drive, that's a solid state drive, and you're going to be really set up for success with Caldera. Okay, 500 gig solid state, um, 16 to 32 on the RAM, and then Catalina are better on the operating system. Yeah. Yeah. Also, be aware, Timothy, and the customers as well, that 
uh, called ourselves a full suite of PCs already preloaded with Linux and oh, cool. software and Macs preloaded with Caldera software. Um, it would be preloaded with the software, but not your specific license. Your license is extra because your license is very specific to your printers. But that right. is something IT supplies can certainly provide you with a quote on as well. Oh, cool. So you can get like a Mac Mini or a PC, like all decked out and ready to go, spec'd out the way you guys want it. Yep, it comes ready to plug and play, and all you need to do is activate your license on it. Oh, that's excellent. That's really cool. So now that definitely gives me a very easy route to get this done. Perfect. Thank you. My pleasure. Hey, the other thing I wanted to note, so I use Caldera a lot over the years, and uh, running it here, it really reminds me some of the things I really like about it. Let me give you one example. In our demo center, we have seven latex devices, seven. And I'm running all seven at the same time. Boom, 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 boom. I'm sending jobs and I'm running cutters. What's really great about the structure of Caldera is it uses an entirely separate spooler system, okay? So if some, these are complex connections, right? This printer and this printer and the computer are always talking. What's great about uh, um, Caldera is if I send to a 335 and then I send a bunch of jobs and I queue things, okay, so I use the spooler functions. So I might send five jobs to the 365 and then I move over to the Latex 560 and I send more jobs. If something has to resync or something has to connect or a server has to shut down, because you have multiple server engines, everything else is fine. So if you have a complex um, computer printer network like we do, where I have all of these printers running, I can't have printer number three have to restart. And then because of that, every single other printer in my chain goes down. Okay, this is something that happens with other RIPs because they're not using multiple server stations where Caldera has always had that. So if it has to reconnect with the server, like I'm changing settings or bi-directional settings, there's a lot of reasons having nothing to do with a crash. You're just resetting and restarting the server. Each server has its own separate engine so they don't affect one another. So they're independent. And this is a huge big deal. If I just spent two hours setting up all these printers, and I sent all these jobs over there, then that job is set to run overnight. I do not want to have printer number four shut everything in my workflow down, which means I'm like, oh my God, I got to go send them all again. And I got to restart everything again and reconnect them again. That is not uncommon with other RIP software. Okay. Caldera has always had that, and it's very, very stable as a result. So I never really have to worry about running large jobs with multiple spools and multiple printers. It's a really big deal, and I wanted to emphasize one of the things I love about this software. So what I did with this is I built my media. I have it now in two modes. I have 12 and 10 pass regular 12 and 10 pass tiling. And then what I do in Caldera is I just walk over to Easy Media, open it, and then once it's open, I hit uh, import sync. And at that point, it goes and gets all the new stuff. And I just have it auto sync. And it grabs all the new information that I've built, puts it right into the software. Now, now that is kept permanently in Easy Media. And at that point, I open back up the, um, the, um, the control software where I send the files and I select auto load and I select um, request the size. Since it's bi-directional to the printer, it always gets the size. I, I click it again, what media is on there, it finds what media is on there. Then it offers me my rendering intents. You know, It defaults to 300, which is correct. With a latex printer, I'm printing at 1200. You wanna send the files over one quarter the size of your finished, of your print head resolution. So if the printer is 600, it would be a quarter of that. Ours is 1200, so 300 DPI is perfect. You can always send things over at 600, which would be half the rendering tent, but honestly, that's overkill. It's not necessary. So 300 is exactly right. And then I open it up and I do a few other things, which is very nice in Caldera. There's a thing called pure blacks. So anytime I send over a file to print black, any of my images, uh, here's the hipsters. Like if you have a plague of hipsters, sometimes they come around the building, you need a sign. 
this black is 100% black only. I never use rich black because latex doesn't need it. And what's nice with Caldera is I have the ICCs always going to use the ICC, but if I send a file over that's 000, 000 100, boom, it automatically just identifies that as defined by um, only needing pure black, and then it just prints black. It doesn't use cyan yellow or magenta. That would actually defeat the purpose. I'd be using ink needlessly, makes it harder to cure, and you're not actually gonna get a richer black on latex. Our black is a standalone black. I don't need anything else. So you use less ink, and it automatically bypasses intelligently the ICC because it knows I don't want to go in there and print needlessly an ICC blend of black. I use that all the time. I also use all of the advanced settings in Caldera so that every job that comes in, if it's a complex job where I'm using spot colors, vectors, and raster images together in like a PDF, what's very great is Caldera has always had Adobe's PDF engine. So it's using the actual PDF engine that Adobe features. It's not like some approximation and so it separates everything properly. You don't get um, those strange boxes you get or in transparencies where you're not using Adobe's engine. And then also what it does is it tells the, the spot color to go off one way and that is defined by the spot color. It tells the bitmaps to render another way, say perceptual with black point compensation. And then it might tell other colors in the vector groups that you're gonna go as relative color metric or relative color metric with black point and all of that is predefined in advance. And then it will show you how it's gonna print everything. I also like the fact that it keeps all the jobs in the spool. So after I'm done, I can just go back to the spooler and send it again. I don't have to keep going and sending and ripping everything over again. So once I build a complex job, it's done. I don't have to revisit it, it's in the spooler. And then you can tell it how long do you wanna keep things in the spooler, but certain jobs, obviously I'd wanna do a lot. Um, it can support very, very large workflows with multiple, multiple printers. I have on here 13 printers that could all be activated at the same time. Normally, that's what we would have in the demo center. And each one of them can be open and each one of them is stable in its own universe. It's not like having one having to restart is going to lock out the other ones, which happens in what I would consider less... Um, less, uh, what's the word, more unified rips as to more uh, dispersed rips where you have each, each individual server has its own identity. So extremely easy to use. The tiling features which were brought up are outstanding. In fact, the tiling detail that you can go into, just how much you want to define tiling is extraordinary. The color matching is extremely good. It's very reliable on color. I would put the color engine in Caldera at the very top of all the rips in the world. Most of your really seasoned professionals, people that print at the top levels, like people that have to maintain extraordinarily tight color consistency, you'll see again and again, Caldera is pretty much the rip that they use. It's very common in those shops. So version 13 out would take advantage of all of Caldera's a traditional history with all the new features that um, uh, Tasha and um, Joey have brought up. So everything here is printed, it's done, it looks great. I would just keep sending spool jobs. Usually I run the whole thing and I go home. Caldera handles jobs unattended perfectly. I never have to really worry that it's spooling is going to uh, lose contact or drop out. It's a very solid connection. And I think that's about all I have to cover other than Latex user removable print heads, water-based, OMOS, which checks, uh, excuse me, the optical drop detector, which checks all of the nozzles continuously to establish that they're all functioning. If they're not, it will map things automatically. User-friendly inks, environmentally friendly inks, GreenGuard certified for all of almost all of our media. Um, I'm running in a small little studio here with no ventilation no problem with a latex printer. I would not wanna do this with a solvent printer because you're gonna be swimming in solvent fumes. I'd have to have the garage door open all the time. I'd also have to have evacuation for the air. I don't wanna lose my air conditioning. You know, In doing that, I eliminate the air conditioning value of the room, which is nicely climate controlled. We all have um, onboard spectrophotometers on the 365 and up. So these definitely help dial you in. I usually use these in combination with Caldera's onboard color. 
And so I'll use this at the front end, hit color calibrate. Once that's done, then I go into Caldera and then I start through the process in Easy Media and I get extraordinarily good color. That's what I use for all of my uh, competitive printing is I'm gonna use Caldera to control my uh, ink restrictions, build a perfect linear curve, and then also finish it off with an ideal ICC profile with a very large color gamut. So everything goes really well through that system and there's a, a great deal to be said about it. All right, on my end, I think I'm done. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll hang out here for a second. Anything kind of latex related? It doesn't look like we have any more questions, but I'm gonna let some people get some time to do it real quick. So what I'm gonna do is thank you so much, Tim, Joey, and Tasha. This was really great information at this time. We're gonna open the group up for some questions. Guys, you can ask any question you like and we'll direct it to the right person. So please take your time and do that. While we do wait for those questions to appear, just let me take a moment to tell you a little bit about IT Supplies. As you know, IT Supplies is here to support your needs for everything related to the perfect print. Our knowledgeable staff and technical support specialists are here to help you with supplies and support to keep your business running. In addition, we are posting videos on our YouTube channel to help with many of your commonly asked questions. So please contact your sales representative for any assistance that you may need. And if you do not know how to contact your sales rep, you can also call 800-771-9665 and ask for a commercial sales specialist. We Thanks so much for watching this. If you would like to see more of these videos, please go to our YouTube channel.